Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Beerus and we are all education majors at Zane State College located in Zanesville, Ohio, and I specifically am studying elementary education. And just by a raise of hands, how many people actually know where Zanesville is? Oh wow, okay. Okay, well if you don't know where Zanesville is, I have another question to kind of help you out a little bit. And a few years ago, there was a release of exotic animals in Ohio, and if any of you have heard of that, go ahead and raise your hand for me. Okay, <laughs> anyway, that is where Zanesville is, and that is where our school is and everything. But that's not something we're necessarily proud of, and so with our project, we wanted to direct the attention back down to the downtown area and kind of focus on the raw history and everything that Zanesville has to offer. And by doing that, we worked with so many great community partners and learned so much history of the town that we know and we live in today. And Amber is going to go ahead and elaborate on that. Hi, my name is Amber Claypool. I'm majoring more in the special education field. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the history of the downtown Zanesville. We're known for many different things. The confluence of the two rivers, which you can see up where the red arrow is, it's pointed where the Muskingum and the Licking River combine. Um, we're also known for the Zane Trace National um, Trail Road. It was an early trail road in Ohio, and it's had many different names. It's now known as um, Route 40 and National Road. In 1810 to 1812, we was also known as the state capital of Ohio. This was mostly to do with the influence of the pottery. We was also known as the pottery capital of the world. And this was because our, our soil was more clay rich than it was coal rich. And then in the 1950s, the decline in our area was due to the change in the industry. But Kristen will explain that a little bit further in her slide of this presentation. In this picture, you can see this is the Ohio Iron Company that's in Zanesville. And you can see in the 1890s how the, that business was really booming back then. And now you can see the present day photos that it's just really basically abandoned. It just sits there and there's, they do nothing with it. They, it has no purpose anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and direct it over to Alexis and she's going to give you a little bit more insight on the history of Zanesville. Hi guys, my name is Alexis Nelson. I am majoring in early childhood education. Today I'm gonna to talk to you more about the comparisons of then and now and some of our most historical landmarks. The first one here, as you can see, is the Y Bridge. Um, I first showed the 1910 picture. Um, it's not the first one that was built. It first one was built in 1814, but however, that was collapsed when we had the Muskingum flood in 1819. Um, we reconstructed our Y Bridge of, um, a total of five times. Um, it is the only bridge in the United States that is shaped as a Y. In the picture, it shows back then there was businesses, it was well-traveled, it was really well-known. Um, and then our current day, which that bridge was built in 1984, it's not, it's not as widely traveled as it used to be. There's no more businesses really around it. It's just another way for people to get across town. And then next, I'm gonna show you some of the restaurants and shops that we had in our downtown area. Um, it was really blossoming in 1950s. There was a lot of businesses. Everyone was downtown back then. Um, we had three different theaters just downtown. In the picture here, that built those buildings, um, there's five of them there, were owned by two brothers who successfully ran uh, family businesses. And then they passed those buildings on down their generation. And current day, those buildings, there's only one shop left and it's in an antique shop and the rest are just sitting abandoned. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you just some pictures. The one over there is the Zane Hotel. Um, we had many hotels in our downtown area back then. Um, it was very popular, Zane Hotel, I believe was the most popular one that we had. And it's Amanda now as well. And just downtown Zanesville, we had several businesses and different restaurants that filled up. Everybody was there, that's just where everybody went. And now we have maybe three restaurants that are up and operating still today, and there's maybe a handful of shops. Now I'm going to go move forward, and I'm going to have Kristen talk to you more about the decline of Zanesville. Good morning. My name is Kristen Lowry. I am specializing in early education, early childhood education. And um, in the decline of downtown Zanesville, it started because of the industry change. And 
all the big box stores started moving out because they started building the Zanesville Mall in the north of Zanesville. So that's when it started really to decline. But the national poverty rate is 14.7. Um, the Zanesville poverty rate is 31.4. And we are considered at risk by the ARC. And as you can see, the height of the peak of the um, the population was in the 1950s, but then every year after that, it started to declining, as you can see in the diagram. And then um, the red arrows indicate all the abandoned buildings. And due to the poverty level, we just never had the funding to recover from that. So I'm going to switch it over to Stephen, and he's going to talk about the research that we did. Good morning. My name is Stephen Steger, and I'm specializing in high school English. To this part of our project, we're going to talk more about the research, <clears throat> how long the process took, and where, did, and where we found our research. Our, 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 our research began with, a, with an introduction to, to a gentleman named Jim Geyer. He was the historical director for the, all the museums in downtown Zanesville, most notably the um, Stone Academy. Jim was a real asset to helping the students in their research by pointing us in the direction of of all con of the content that was high in historical information. And during our tour of the, and during our walk through the Stone Academy, we learned that it was one of Putnam's oldest historical buildings built in the eight, built in 1809. And it was also hel helped the, um, it was also used to facilitate slaves in the Underground Railroad. <clears throat> we also, we also learned about the 1913 flood and the actress and author Elizabeth Robbins who, who lived in the Stone Academy in the 1960s and 70s. After that, we then proceeded to go to the genealogy department of our public library, where we were helped immensely by two wonderful individuals who, 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 helped, point the, who helped point the students in the direction to gather their research materials, as well as even pulled out some books that they thought would help us further our research. <clears throat> now, aside from using just the internet to gather our information, we used all, all sorts, all sorts of references from newsletter, newspapers, newsletters, history books, old historical maps, postcards, and the like, to help to help further our research. And um, if you, and if you look on our, and if you ever, and if you stop by our table at any time yesterday or later on today, you'll see that we have all kinds of antiques and stuff that we procured through um, families and um, just. And just in some of those some of those buildings there, that we have that we have also used to demonstrate that our the, the pottery capital and just some and just some of our local history. And I'm going to hand it over to Josh to tell you what we did with all that research once we compiled it all. Hi, my name is Joshua Combs. I'm specializing in uh, elementary mathematics. After we, we got our, our history and all the research, we used an app called Munzee Scavenger Hunt. It's like Pokemon Go that was launched in 2016, but not only you're, you're not searching for Pokemons, you're, you're searching for, the, for the, these Q&R codes, as you can see, and we, and we hide them all over, all over um, the downtown Zanesville. And we have de we deployed about 25 of them in various locations downtown, which uh, which was was pretty much just enough for right now. But we would like to put more in as as time goes further. We mainly focused it on on the young generation. Um, young generation very much don't believe history is isn't fun enough, so we try to make it as fun as possible for the young generation so we can get them um, interested about, about history but also feel like they're playing the game as well. We, fir we first launched our, our test run at our community event which is called First Friday. It's every, it's every the first Friday of the month and we had about 20 to 25 people try, try the, uh, the app out and 95 to 100 percent of the pe the people who tried it out 
uh, loved the app and want and wanted more, more information about it and wanted to try it out uh, when they get home. For more information about about the Munzee app, please join me at uh, at our table and I'll explain it further. And I will turn it over to Kristen. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kristen Brandt, and I'm aspiring to be a high school history teacher. So aspiring to be a history teacher, I'm sure you can imagine that this project is very special to me. And to be honest, I hadn't really been to downtown Zanesville that much. I'm not technically from Zanesville. I just live close, so I go to college there. And I also really love Zane State. Go Tigers. <laughs> so after all of this research and hard work and stickering up our town, you might wonder what's next. What's the future for Zanesville? Well, honestly, our future is looking a lot brighter due to, ironically, the ARC who approved Zanesville to get a grant to have Wi-Fi all over downtown. So now, kids who are downtown, or anyone who's downtown, that maybe they have an iPod, they don't have a cell phone, or people with a limited data plan who, if they use more data, their parents are probably going to get pretty mad, they can now use our app. They can walk around town. They can be active while they're just walking around town, having fun. They can find our Munzees and scan them. It'll give a brief history of it so they're learning about history and where they come from. It's not just, look, I loved Pokemon Go too, but you didn't learn much from it. This gives you an opportunity to learn. And also, with the Wi-Fi being accessible and our app, we're hoping that it'll give our small businesses more attention. There's, like Alexa said, a few shops and a few restaurants, and there's a cafe called The Treehouse, and they're like more of the younger generation who we're hoping to collaborate with them that maybe if people get enough Munzees that they'll give you like a free small hot chocolate. And I gotta tell you, it's the best hot chocolate I've ever had. So come to Zanesville and play some Munzee. So during this project, we were able to work very closely with our community partners. Like Steven said, we were working with Jim Geyer, the wonderful ladies in the library who spent a long time pulling out books and just sitting with us and telling stories. And Jay Bennett, our public service commissioner, spent a while just sitting with us and telling us how excited he was about this project. It turns out that they were doing a walking tour of Zanesville at the same time that we were doing our Munzee app. So it came together so beautifully that we were able to correlate them that they printed out their walking app, or they printed out their map, and we printed, or we have our online map. And I think that when we were doing our first Friday, there were some people walking around just the walking map because some people aren't all right with cell phones yet, and that's okay. <laughs> so they were still able to walk around and learn our history. And we had the wonderful opportunity on Monday before we came to see all of you to present at our Chamber of Commerce meeting. We're invited to go there because our community partners were just so excited that they wanted to see what we were doing. So we were able to sit there and the the mayor actually invited us into his office. He bought us dinner. We had some yummy pizza. His wife baked us cookies. They were really good. And he just told us about what downtown Zanesville used to be like. He said that there were theaters and you could come to town and just make a day out of going to town, seeing a film, like the special films on Saturdays, like Alexis talked about. You could go to eat at a few different places. They played movies in the park. They did so much and now it's gone. There's still a few things left, but our cause is to try and revive that fun downtown. We realize it's not going to happen overnight. Some stickers on some buildings isn't going to change the fact that Zanesville's declining, but we're hoping that it'll bring something back to downtown because it deserves the attention that it should get. So to really wrap up our presentation, we have so many special thank yous to have. The Zanesville Muskingum County Chamber of Commerce who let us sit there and present to them and really like just so, like say our cause. They really enjoyed it. Mr. Jay Bennett, the mayor, the Stone Academy Jim Geyer was so helpful to us. The library genealogy department, those ladies spent so long pulling books off the shelves just for us to look at. Kelly Ashby, who gave us prizes for our first Friday event and talked to us about the community and the city of Zanesville for helping us. They came out to our event. They tried out the Munzee app to the ARC for giving us this grant. I had never been to a big city before. The subway's kind of fun. <laughs> I never would have gotten to experience that right now if it wasn't for this grant. And I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys if it wasn't for this grant. We appreciate it so much. And our biggest thank you is to our professor, Wendy Coyle, who drove us six hours here, all of us in a van. <laughs> and she really cares about us. She's more than our professor. She's honestly a mom to us. And we thank her so much. And we thank all of you for this opportunity.